Welcome back guys, today we are going to be reviewing the Savivi Cogent and the Savivi Relic. Now, I'm doing these two together because there's a lot of differences, obviously, but there's also a lot of similarities that I haven't seen anybody really point out, and I kind of wanted to hit them together. Honestly, these are very much the same knife in a lot of ways, in which case you really don't need to buy both of them. So at the end, I'm going to tell you which one I would choose after going through it all. So let's get on with it. Let's start with the Savivi Relic. So the Savivi Cogent is a G10 with stainless steel liners, and we do have a deep carry reversible pocket clip going on here. We also have a button lock. This is not a liner lock or a frame lock. This is a button lock. Savivi's first button lock short of the Savivi Elementum, but this one you can actually deploy with the flipper tab. You can also deploy with the reverse flick just like that um, if, you're, if you're so inclined to do so. It's not really set up to do that, but it's, it's pretty darn easy to do. As we can see here, it's pretty straightforward. We have some liners, we have some barrel spacers going on here, and then we also have a lanyard post, which is done so well. I love when they do it like that. That's just, it's so non-obtrusive. It's not in your face, and there you go. This G10 is nice, it's grippy enough, and they do have some looking, yeah, we'll say some designs going on here with like scratch marks and then like a line down the center. Now, one of the best parts about being a button lock is they can make both of these sides very symmetrical so either way the knife goes it looks almost the exact same and that's a good thing the action on this is very interesting i will say the detent on this guy is tuned so well for being their first go at a button lock detent or the lack thereof right it doesn't really have a detent itself it's actually the button mechanism that releases based on force so just like how your detent is a little ball that goes in the side and after a certain amount of pressure, it pops open. This one is basically a little circular cup that holds this in and after a certain amount of pressure, it releases like that. Same concept, but totally different execution and they definitely executed it really well. There's no back and forth, no up and down and it is perfectly centered. This blade is a 14C28N with a very, very nice flat grind coming on down here. We have the same type of sharpening choil slash finger area that the Savivi Elementum does kind of have to an extent. So it's obviously a little bit deeper on the Elementum, but it's the same idea. You really can put your finger there. I just don't recommend it. It's not as safe as other knives. Here we have some a little bit of wonkiness next to the blade. Now, I mean, it, it looks fine and the plunge grind's done well. It looks like that the sharpening choil or whatever is going on here is something that, you know, you could really, I, I feel like they could have done better. It looks a little goofy, but other than that, not a big deal. So this blade is very thin. If I had to guess, it's going to be around 115 thousandths. We have some jimping up here and then a swedge that runs the length of the blade. Now let's switch over and check out the relic. All right, so your Savivi Relic is kind of the same thing. We have some liners, only this is a liner lock, a G10 scale going on here, pretty much the same hardware, same barrel spacers. We have the same lanyard post going on there. It is also a flipper tab with your traditional detent right there. Blade is a little off center right now. Not the end of the world, I can fix that. And actually a little push pushed it back there. So. It's not a big deal. It, it's I, off center doesn't bother me on most knives because I can fix it without it without much issue. The pocket clip is reversible and wait, one of the key things about this, you do have a full pair of tweezers. I'm not gonna talk too much about these tweezers other than the fact that you have a pair of tweezers in your knife, which I have used twice. Uh, probably one of the more functional tools out of something and it's mainly for splinters and whatnot, but it works really, really great. They're very discreet and they don't bother you ever by being there. I think that's a fantastic addition to this knife itself. The action, while it doesn't feel as good as the Savivi Cogent, they just knocked that detent strength out of the park. It, it feels really good. It's actually a little strong on the stronger side, but 
you know, it, it, I don't have any problems with it. Once this knife breaks in, I can probably back it off a little bit. Either way, it's not gonna be too bad. So here you can see. Can I fail it? Oh yeah, I can fail it. Ooh, I said I could fail it, but here we go. Can I fail it? Let's see. Ah, that was me trying to fail it. I know I can get it to fail, but that was me legitimately trying. So there's that. Again, liner lock, not too bad. Same exact thing we got going on with the cogent right here. And same exact blade shape as the cogent. Now the only difference is, is the face isn't going to go up as far. Probably lending it not to be such a narrow behind the edge as the cogent. All right, so let's get you guys some size comparisons. First, up against each other. As you can see, they are virtually the same. The cogent keeps wanting to come in like a little smaller, but I mean, realistically lengthwise, you could see that the relic virtually disappears. Now, if you were to flip the script, you could also see that the cogent virtually disappears. These things are virtually the same length, which we will get specs after the size comparison. So up against the Civivi Praxis and the Civivi Elementum, obviously the Elementum is going to be coming in much shorter, and the Praxis is going to be coming in a little bit longer. Next, I have chosen two knives that are basically in the same wheelhouse as these. First is your Kershaw Bare Knuckle, which is coming in just about the same length, and your CJRB Scoria, which again is coming in at just about the same length. All right, so for your most common comparison, we have your Rat Model 1, which is coming in obviously a little bit longer than both, and your Rat Model 2, which is coming in at, again, a little bit shorter than both. This is that perfect medium size range knife, in my opinion. The Rat Model 1's a little bit too big for some, and the Rat Model 2's a little bit too small for some. This kind of hits that sweet spot. Last on the comparisons are two knives that I use very, very frequently. That is my Kaiser Sheepdog and my card in 154CM, coming in at right around the same price and same length as these. And then my Benchmade Bugout 20CV and the Titanium Plitanium Scales, coming in at a much shorter than both of these. All right, guys, now let's get on with the specs. Then I'll talk about the differences and which one I would choose for me and my overall thoughts. And then I'll let you guys go. Okay, first, let's start off with the weight of the Civivi Cogent. Coming in at just about 3.8 ounces. Next, let's get the weight of the Civivi Relic. Coming in at 4.13 ounces. No, it's hard to see there, guys. Sorry about that. All right, guys, before we move on with the rest of the specs, let's jump into why one of these weighs more than another. And because they're virtually the same knife, there's gotta be a difference, right? Well, that difference lies in the fact that this isn't a liner lock, meaning they can totally mill out the inside of this knife and not have any issues or obstructions in the process. As you can see here, see all of that is milled out. That is all areas that they've taken out due to the fact that there is no liner. They can really get in there. Now with the liner on this side, they did mill out the show side as much as they could, but you could tell because of that liner, they weren't able to mill out the liner side. It's all right behind the liner. So that's where some of your added weight's coming from. Obviously, they also had to make the scales probably a slight bit thicker due to the fact that there is a pair of tweezers in the back end there. We'll find that out when we get to the micrometer measurements. So the overall length of the relic itself is coming in right at around eight and we'll call it an eighth inches. The blade length itself is coming in at about three and a half, but the cutting edge is about three and two th or three and a third kind of making that up as I go trying to guesstimate based on where we're at but the blade length is about three and a half the cutting edge is shit, just shy of three and a half now for your cogent this one is coming in at just shy of eight inches the blade length still coming in at about three and a half but your cutting edge is once again about three and a third coming in there all right, last but not least, let's get some micrometer measurements going on. All right, so the blade stock thickness is gonna be coming in at 115 thousandths. I like how they're doing that, relatively thin. The behind the edge thickness is coming in right at about 12 thousandths, that's awesome. The overall thickness of the knife's coming in at right at half of an inch. That's gonna be pretty damn thin and pretty average when it comes to the overall thickness of knives. And then the height in your pocket at its highest points, one and a quarter inches. That's not bad at all. 
Now for your Civivi Relic. I would assume most of these measurements are going to be very similar. 115 thousandths on the blade stock. A little bit more narrow behind the edge. That's cool. Thickness. It's coming in at slightly thicker. Not much. Actually, I anticipated it being thicker than it actually was. So that's cool. And then the overall height at its highest point is slightly higher than the Civivi Cogent as well. All right, so let's take a look at the similarities here. The Relic is coming in with a clip point with the stonewash look, and the Cogent is coming also with this clip point stonewash look despite having that coating on the blade. Eat this blade is 14C28, and this blade is coming in a Nitro V. Let's take a look at the chemical makeups of both of those steels right here. Now, as you can see, Nitro V is a wannabe better version of 14C with a slight bit of added vanadium, but it's not necessarily enough vanadium to make up a huge difference in edge, re or edge retention or edge wear, if you will. So they're basically the same. As you can see, I strapped these things both up and they actually strap up just fine. Uh, they both kind of act the same. I, I haven't noticed much difference between the two. Next, another big difference is the liner lock versus, or I guess similarity rather, is we have stainless steel liners, G10, both reversible pocket clips, and these are both flippers. So that's kind of where the similarities end and the differences begin. Obviously, the biggest difference in these two knives is the button lock versus the liner lock. That adds for a different detent system, that adds for a different detent feeling when you're flipping the Relic versus the Cogent, and it just makes up a totally different feeling in the knife itself. Next, let's get on to the differences. So the main key difference here is the button lock versus the liner lock. Now the liner lock is going to have that traditional detent ball here that adds for a very typical feeling. While the button lock has this feeling where it almost feels mushy and then pops. It's really weird. I do actually enjoy the flip of the button lock more than the liner lock just because of the way that detent feels. It's Maybe it's just different, but they're both very, very functional and work very well. Next difference would be, obviously we talked about the blade steels, Nitro V versus 14C. Now, again, there's that, not much of a difference, guys. It's, it's, it's virtually the same thing. Uh, again, added vanadium, and those steel nerds can jump on me all you want. It's literally just added vanadium that's at a 0.8% extra vanadium. Which, if you want to get technical, if you look at S35VN or M390, we'll put those up right here. Those have 3 and 4% vanadium content along with molybdenum and everything else that they've added to it, which adds for a drastically different edge wear type of situation. So the 0.8 isn't gonna be that much of a difference. And in fact, Nitro V actually sacrifices 1% chromium to get that extra 0.8 vanadium in there. And what that does, in my opinion, it makes it a little less corrosion resistant while not really adding enough edge retention to it. So that's where 14C, despite being the, you know, the, uh, the one generation before Nitro V comes in, it's still a little bit better than Nitro V. One thing we haven't talked about throughout this whole video is the ergonomics. So while the Civivi Cogent really kind of locks you into a specific place, like the way that this handle is designed is your one finger definitely goes here and then this finger definitely stops here and comes in here. So you're gonna be sitting there like this and you kind of actually feel confined in here. To me, I feel confined, but I also feel very much locked in. I really can't choke up to this point due to where that blade angle stops. Now, if I were to switch to this one, these have really blocky ergonomics. Very neutral. I feel like I'm not going to get tired more so than any other knife. I feel like it's not any more comfortable than any other knife that's just neutral ergonomics. I kind of enjoy these a little bit more. I compare these maybe to the Civivi Brazen. Now, in this one, I don't know why, but you can definitely get a little bit more choke up area to where I feel comfortable saying this is a relatively good choke up point here. I don't feel the pocket clip on either of these, but as you can see right here in these two pictures, they both carry very, very deep and you really don't even see any of the knife when they're in your pocket. And last, to add in a little bit more ergonomic talk, we're gonna talk about this. You can actually put your thumb right here and it feels normal, this feels where it's supposed to go. I always have my thumb sitting there for some reason. This one has this weird like 
hump right here. It's almost like the SOCOM Elite, but not committing to the whole process where this doesn't feel right, this doesn't necessarily feel right, this doesn't actually feel right. I, I mean, that alone plus the neutral ergonomics would definitely, in my opinion, mean that the Civivi Relic has better ergonomics than the Cogent, but that's also to somebody who's biased, I like the neutral ergonomics better. Last, let's talk about that price point. This is coming in at approximately $70, and this is coming in at about $72. Very, very comparable, very similar. So, to end with, these are actually both really good knives. They have very, very thin blade stocks, and that's really where we're seeing the knife world go to now these days. It's, they're, they're listening and they're saying, we don't need a beefy pocket knife for EDC. We want something that'll cut and cut well. And both of these will do that. Now, with the Cogent, you're getting a little bit more fidget play factor, and with the Relic, you're getting a little bit more form over, or function over form, really, because you have those tweezers in the back, nothing special, and then you have this neutral ergonomics. Again, nothing special about this. In fact, if this was just another review of the Relic and there were no tweezers, it wouldn't surprise me that Civivi kicked out another just boring, plain old knife. The fact that you added tweezers to it kind of does make it a very useful day-to-day -day tool because I don't know about you guys, but there's plenty of uses for tweezers throughout your day-to-day -day life. I mean, it, the splitters, you can, if you drop something in between a crack or something, you know, like, it's just, I feel like there's a lot more applications for that. All in all, both of these are really good choices. If you're looking for a more function over form, you're getting that out of the Relic. If you're looking for a little bit more form over function, you're going to get that out of the Cogent. Both of them will do slicing tasks just fine and will get you through your day either way. Hope this was helpful. My name is Tyler. This has been Everyday EDC. You guys stay sharp, stay safe, and have a great freaking rest of your day. Thanks for watching, guys.